This is a magic circle workout with my oldest client, Renate. Renate is 86 and has been coming to me for Pilates for quite a while. Before, she was an admired teacher of mine in my uh, grammar school. After that, I met her in my, during my studies at the University of Vienna. I tell Renate where to hold the circle. She's going to hold it with the heels of her hands, with long arms, a long spine. She presses her feet down on the reformer box, sits on the Cadillac, erect, and presses the circle to find her low abs and lift her backbones off of each other. And when I ask her where she feels it, she says, apart from the stomach, she feels it in her back. Then I tell her that the magic circle originated as um, the ring around a beer barrel. When Mr. Pilates um, used his barrels of beer for his clients, he built the barrels, the small barrel, step barrel and ladder barrel and he used the rings, especially for this, um, as a um, portable um, Pilates device for this magic circle exercises. You can put the ring between your hands, between your inner thighs. Now I tell Renata to lift up the ring at eye height and press it while finding the low abs and lifting her low spine. I tell her to bring the shoulders on her back, open the collarbones, and when I ask her where she feels the work, she says in her arms and in her back, in addition to her stomach, which is good. Then I ask her if it's okay um, to breathe while she does that. And she says it's easier to breathe in when she presses it. Then I tell her next exercise to try the other way around. And here I show her the original or the copy of the original magic circle, which has a metal band and wooden handles. Hers is a fitness magic circle, which is also quite strong, not as strong as the metal one, but still. And I tell her, that you can buy these things in, in sports equipment shops and sometimes also in, in big department stores. But these circles are not as strong and sturdy as the original ones produced by Pilates equipment companies. And I think she wants to buy some. <laughs> then I tell her to lift the circle right above her head. In this picture you see her leaning back a little. She presses the circle and I tell her to lift the low abs and lift the low spine and sit up. Yeah, and here you see how she can grow when she lifts her spine. I correct her knees because one of them tries to fall in. And then she releases the circle. We do not too much because she doesn't um, work with her hands so much. She is a translator. She still translates um, into Portuguese and into Spanish. And she's an avid reader, although she has troubles with her eyes. And I think she can only see 20% on one eye and not, nothing on the other. So she goes for feel. Here she pumps the magic circle in a um, version of the 100. She inhales for five counts and she exhales for five counts while lifting the spine and finding her low abs. She tries to have long arms 
and I hope she presses from the back of her arms and from the back. And I think she makes it till the end. She breathes in her rib, into her rib cage 360 degrees while she pumps the magic circle. She's very conscientious and she, she does everything I say. And here she says it's hard to breathe like I tell her, um, but this is not her problem. This is my problem because I mostly teach people uh, my breathing pattern, but they should do their own, of course. And mine is a little too quick. So now I tell her to scoot a little bit to the side so that she has room on her right and left side for her long arm because we're going to bring the circle underneath the one palm of her hand a little bit forward um, of her body so in front of the shoulder so that she can press down while she lifts her spine and at the same time she brings her shoulder blade onto her back and she tries to press and lift and when she releases the circle she tries to stay tall although she would lean more towards releasing and shortening her torso like everybody does but when I correct her she does it in a very well way now we are going to do a mermaid a side bend she presses the circle, lifts her spine, spine and tries to bend over the circle side. She inhales while she lifts and exhale while she lowers, stays lifted and bends to the side. And this pressing of the circle should make her bend her spine in a... Um, regular way so that head, neck, upper back, middle back and low back bend in one curve. We'll see how she does this on the other side as she already knows what's going to happen. We we'll bring the circle a little bit forward so that her shoulder has a better position. And while she presses the circles you see that she rotates her spine. I correct her to stay strong and neutral in the spine while she presses. And now she presses down and bends over and she has much more length on this side. Might be because she has already done the exercise on the first side. Now we are going to place the circle between her inner thighs, which she's not very happy about because she says she has never been able to do the split, which is not uh, uh, something you have to be able to do. But um, she tells me that it's hard for her to open the legs. So she has stiff hips because uh, Renate is a sitting person. She sits correcting, she, she sits translating, she sits uh, reading. She was a tennis player in her youth, a very good tennis player. She played in tournaments, she told me. So she has a good command of her body parts, but still she sits. She loves opera and concerts and she, I think she goes every week and sits for hours in her box in the opera to listen to wonderful musical pieces. And here she presses the circle between her inner thighs, lifts her spine and finds her abdominals and in this case also her uh, pelvic floor. When I ask her if she feels this also in her glutes, she, she, she doesn't say so. She says she feels it in the stomach and in the back. She presses her arms against the Cadillac frame.
to get a nice rib cage placement. And now she pumps the circle. She tries it from the inner upper thighs and then releases and is very happy to get it out. Yeah, she didn't like that. But she, yeah, she says she feels it in the top of her um, thighs and in the quadriceps. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. She, she, she gets it. It's important. And she says she doesn't feel it in the back as a pain. She feels it as if there is a muscle activation. Then we're going to use the magic circle like Mr. Pilates used on his boxer clients. He wanted us all to have a strong neck. And in boxing you need a strong neck. But also in our time you need a strong neck. So she puts the circle around her head. One cushion or one handle is on the back of her head and the hands are in the other handle and she presses her head back while she pushes the hands forward. It's an isometric exercise and she lifts her spine and lifts her abdominals while she does that. And it's a nice release for her back when you strengthen the neck. And this is for everybody. If you don't have a magic circle, you can do this with pressing your hands against your head. Now we bring the circle onto one temple and the other hand holds the handle of the circle. And I tell her to keep the hand strong and push her head into the circle instead of pushing the circle into her head. And this is also an isometric hold which strength, strengthens the side of her neck. She lifts herself out of the pelvis. She tries to bring her shoulder onto her back while she strengthens her neck. We put it on the other temple And I explained to her it's better to keep hand, circle and tempo connected and have not one of these parts win the game. So everything is pressing at the same time. Her other hand can press onto the Cadillac frame to get her shoulder onto her back and get her rib cage centered. She lifts her spine and you see when she presses her hand down onto the frame of the Cadillac, she gets a better lift in her spine. And I tell her the best thing, or that's what people love doing, is when you put the chin on one of the handles and hold the two hands on the lowest handle. So the top handle is under your chin and the palms of the hands are in, pressed into the, each other. And you press your chin into the circle and make a little spine stretch forward with your neck bones. So all seven cervical vertebra get lengthened and get a little outward curve or at least length. By pressing the chin down you get length, length in the back and the front of the cervical spine. I love this exercise and I think she likes it too. It's again 
and pressing down to lift up inside. And then I ask her, are you warm? Because only the pressing made me sweat. I found my inner connections. She said the best position for her was the ring between her hands. She didn't like the one between her thighs at all. So I think I'm going to do something in the future with her to work on opening the hips. Thank you for watching.